A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of all the camping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Titus chapter 2. The grace of God has appeared bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, and it was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, a welcome to a building as warm as we can get it, um, and uh, a welcome to those who have 
braved and perhaps even, I might say, risked departing being in front of a television uh, on a night in which the birds are playing. But this is the kind of crowd that one might expect to gather together after hearing this sort of story that we've heard. I don't know if you uh, caught what happened in there, but I was struck this time uh, as I read it about the kinds of feelings and emotions that are present in this reading uh, of the Nativity of Jesus. What I'm most struck by is what is absent, actually. Nobody's certain. Nobody knows for sure. Instead, there are people who are amazed, who are questioning, and who are frightened. I think in a lot of the um, religious language that we might hear in the air uh, about what it means to be Christian, especially nowadays, we tend to hear more about uh, certainty and being right and being correct of uh, a kind of narrative about the Christian life that suggests that if you're Christian, you'd either need to get your act together or that somehow you'll receive blessings and your life will be put together. But that's not who's surrounding Jesus in this reading. It's a bunch of shepherds who smell because they've been tending their flock at night, defending it from wolves who are ritually unclean because they do that work. And they're frightened because they know the stories. They know when angels show up, especially when angels fill the heavens, things are usually at risk. But this time, the announcement is good news. Things are different. And so they go, as the angels have told them, to the place where God has been born among us. God has decided to become human, not sort of like us, not almost like us, or pretending to be like us, but exactly like us, with all of our own confusions and struggles and stubbing toes and learning how to eat, how to walk. God has entered into that mess, and the first thing that happens is that the work of heaven is to gather around this incarnate God, people who don't quite fit. Even if we go outside of Luke's gospel, if we go to Matthew, which is the only other one that really talks about uh, Jesus' birth, uh, the exception of sort of John that we'll hear tomorrow morning, a prologue, it's not really about a birth, it's just describing who Jesus is. But in Matthew and Luke, the ones that talk about Jesus' birth, when we go to Matthew, the people who show up, the guests who are invited, are strangers. They're, they're not even Jewish. They're astrologers from the East, Gentiles who are not clean in any way, shape, or form religiously. They're not even attached to, to the stories of how God has worked in this world. And yet, they are invited to come and see what God is doing again. God begins as an incarnate human by gathering around himself people who just don't fit, who might be more overwhelmed or amazed or questioning, who don't get it yet and maybe never will. That's who God decides to have the angels announce what God is doing. The angels announce it to those people and God gathered them around God's self and that doesn't change from this night all the way through to the crucifixion and the resurrection and the ascension. God is intent on gathering around God's self all the wrong people. Not because they need God the most, everybody needs God equally. 
God gathers around God's self the wrong people because God is intent on working God's salvation of the whole creation through this misfit island of toys. That's where God has decided to work. And the stranger, the alien, the oppressed, the unwashed, shepherds, magi, us. From this night, we go out like the shepherds, amazed at what we have seen and telling everyone what we saw, just as it had been told to us. This night, in our midst, Christ will again be present in bread and wine, and will again pour out his own life for each and every one of us. We will see this same God incarnate, present now in bread and wine, to feed and nourish us so that we may be that presence of Christ to others that we encounter. This night we are transformed by a God who has decided to become like us, to face our own struggles, to get what it means to be human, and through that, to bring salvation to all creation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.